Are there any ways that we can enhance a good sleep? See, in this uh, rat race, hustle bustle of your day-to-day -day routine, end-to-end -end activities, people somehow neglect sleep. Whereas sleep is something we should, you should never ignore or neglect. A lot of times we said that a good quality mattress, a good quality pillow will help you enhance or will help you have better sleep. Is it true or is it just like a marketing skill from the mattresses companies? Pillows and mattresses, they are like your companions. They are like your sleep companions. You spend a good eight hours at least on a pillow with a pillow and a mattress. How to sleep like Elon Musk. What is the sleep routine of uh, Bill Gates? Also about our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, I mean, does he sleep at all? What do you think that uh, when people are trying to, you know, imitate these big people, is this something to do with sleep? See, when people are searching for sleep routines of uh, Mr. Modi, people like Elon Musk or Bill Gates, they generally are... Welcome everyone, Sleep Talk with Coefit. I am Sandeep Kaushik and today we are going to talk about something which is very essential for everyone. For some of us, it's luxury. For some of us, it's necessity. And some of us are struggling to get that. Yes, you got it right. We are talking about sleep. And today, to talk about how to get sound sleep and also talking about some myths about sleeping, we have a super expert with us. Please welcome Nirbhaya Gupta, who's the CEO of Coifit Mattresses and one of the fastest growing mattress brand in India, a young guy who's very passionate about sleep technology. So welcome Nirbhaya. Thank you Sandeep for having me with you. Really excited to be here. I'm really passionate about sleep. You said it right. And looking forward to answer all the queries, anything and everything about sleep. Yes, I'll answer it for you. Great, we'll love that. And I'm sure all our audience would love that. So to begin, I'd like to ask you that uh, I mean, a lot of us say that uh, it's kind of a God given thing. In, you know, whatever is coming to you is going to be like sound sleep or whatever. It's a God-given thing. It will get to some people, will not. But are there any ways that we can enhance a good sleep so that it's good for us? Do you have some tips for our viewers that how they can really uh, make their sleep better? Yes, absolutely. There are some practical tips which I would like to share with my viewers. So these tips I personally follow myself. Uh, see, in this uh, rat race, hustle bustle of your day-to-day -day routine, end-to-end -end activities, people somehow neglect sleep. Whereas sleep is something we should you should never ignore or neglect. Yeah. Getting eight hours of ideal sleep, getting eight hours of good deep sleep is very, very important. And that helps you bounce back the next day. Awesome. So, uh, when, when you ask me about the tips or the uh, any kind of... Uh, uh, information on that, I will say that first and more foremost thing is having the right schedule. It okay. is very important to follow a sleep schedule. So for example, if I give you uh, regarding to meals, uh, say lunch time, generally you have it say between 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Yeah, most of us have. Uh, yeah, even for dinners, yeah. I guess the idle time will be say 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh -huh. Similarly, you need to identify and fix your sleep schedule. Okay. So if you're sleeping at say 10 p.m., ideally it should be uh, within that bracket say half an hour before that or half an hour after that. So that will help your body to adapt better. So you want to say that as a sleeping schedule, I mean sleeping on time and kind of waking up on time regularly the same way helps you. Yes, absolutely. Your body gets used to it. Your okay. body starts adapting to it. And you'll be amazed to know that uh, in today's world, even uh, technology is helping you with that. So uh -huh. I'll give you a little example for that. Uh -huh. My mobile phone, instead of me putting up the reminder for my sleep, I, I noticed uh, some weeks back on the basis of my activities, of my usage of the phone and everything. And on the basis of my morning alarm, he, uh, the mobile phone is able to identify that what time I am generally sleeping. And these days, it alarms you that your sleep time is it? Uh, so not not really the bedtime alarm, but uh -huh. uh, the wake up alarm. Okay. On the basis of that, he's able to identify that what is the idle time I should sleep in, keeping uh -huh. in mind the eight to nine hour cycle. And he's putting me, giving me reminders on regular basis that Nirbhay, are you looking to sleep any oh, any time awesome. soon yeah. now? Yeah. And yeah. I was so amazed uh, seeing that being into sleep industry. Okay. So yes, we should we should uh, schedule it. We should kind of. Uh, uh, make a schedule around it, say fix some timings, have consistent, uh, some what, consistency what about else it. Nirbhaya, what else do you think? So apart from that, uh, another uh, a very easy uh, tip that I would like to share with my viewers over here is that uh, you should avoid any kind of heavy meals at least one hour before the bedtime. Mm -hmm. So if you're having heavy meals or your dinner one hour between within your uh, sleep cycle, then it generally, uh, what you say, reduces your metabolism, disturbs the metabolism, disturbs your body cycle and and, uh, and thereby your sleep cycle as well, which is not recommended at all. Okay. In fact, any kind of uh, caffeine intake, whether it is coffee, whether it is any other liquid or any other beverage, uh, including caffeine, you should generally avoid it because that delays the sleeping process. 
I would say the million dollar question in this is that the screen time. I mean, I love to keep watching movie and then sleep. Or maybe, you know, look at my social media and spend some time on that and then sleep. Do you think that it helps? I mean, I feel that I feel sleepy after watching movie for some time. Do you think it helps or is the other way around? No, it's the other way around. It really disrupts your uh, sleep. So again, I would like to recommend that you should avoid any kind of screens, uh -huh. whether it is your mobile phones, whether it is your tablets, laptops, uh, TVs, watching OTD content, you should avoid uh, any kind of screens within at least one hour of your uh, sleep cycle. So one hour before sleep, it's better to kind of leave them and yeah. Yes, for example, if you're looking to sleep at 10 p.m., the 9 p.m. is ideally should be the cutoff time wherein we are uh, basically avoiding all the uh, all these screens. Yeah. Uh, in, in today's world of social media, uh, every one of us is busy scrolling reels under a blanket, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh, spending endless hours and of our time just before the bedtime going through it. Uh, it is not at all recommended. It is it is a big uh, no no uh, for me. In fact, uh, I was going through one research. Uh, wherein a group of uh, couples performed this uh, in England, wherein they had a no uh, phone policy in the bedroom. So, for example, when they're going in the bedroom, they're leaving the phones outside so that they are able to go in their sleep cycle, their slumber more easily and more effectively. Okay. And on the basis of that, they were able to identify that it, it actually it, it was helping them. They were able to sleep better. They were able to wake up better and they were able to bounce back to their work or their daily routine in a more progressive way. And do you think that uh, uh, a lot of times being said that a good quality mattress, a good quality pillow will help you enhance or will help you have a better sleep? Is it true or is it just like a marketing skill from the mattresses companies? Uh, no, nothing like that. It is it is really true. Uh -huh. So. Uh, Pillows and mattresses, they are like your companions. They are like your sleep companions. Mm -hmm. You spend a good eight hours at least on a pillow with a pillow Absolutely. and a mattress. Yeah, yeah. So just imagine uh, people in case they are looking for any kind of purchases these days, for example, be it a car, be it a mobile phone. They generally research, spend a lot of time, take desk drives, take demos, take pilots and then try and pick up the product. Yeah. Whereas in case of pillows and mattress, somehow we feel that it, it is an ignored space or it is a neglected space. It is considered I think most of us go say hard wala layer or soft wala layer. Yes, yes. It is just considered as uh, any other utility. Okay. Just like your uh, any other utility in your home. But it is not like that. Uh -huh. When you're spending good 33% of your life with a mattress and a pillow, you ought to be uh, really. Uh, what you say, uh, keen about it? You have you have to research it. I mean, right. Do the research, find the you right one, right fit yes, for your body yes, and all yes, that. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely great tips. I think I think the most difficult for me would be like having a less screen time before sleeping, and I'm sure, sure viewers for all of you as well. Um, also, I want to know that a lot of people say that eight hours is a great sleep. I mean, is it good for any any age group, or do you think that in a different age group you need a uh, different kind of sleep time? So yes, when we say eight hours, that that is an average number. That is an ideal average number which uh, experts recommend for everyone to sleep on. But again, it depends on which uh, age bracket or it which life cycle you are in. So for example, if I like to break it into say four paths, uh, from zero to twelve years when you are kids, on when you are toddlers, uh, then I guess around. Uh, 10 to 12 hours is an idle time which uh, okay. people, uh, which the children or 0 to 12 like hours. Infants and all that. Infants yeah. and all. Up yeah, to yeah. 12 years. I mean, uh, they normally get it. Yeah. Yes, yes. So 10 to 12 years is really a good time. Uh -huh. I mean, if, if we talk about say newborn kids, this they, they, they sleep as long as say, 16 hours, 18 okay. hours. Because at that time, uh, their body organs are developing, their yeah, brain yeah. functions are developing and sleep is considered vital for memory, for development, for organs, everything. But generally for say 0 to 12 years of age bracket, 10 to 12 hours is good sleep. Okay. Then as we move uh, upwards, say our teenage, yeah, yeah. then generally the sleep cycle is between 8 to 10 hours, which is considered okay. being good. Uh -huh. Say being in your college, being in your adolescent and uh, that phase. So 8 to 10 hours is good sleep. Then when we move a little ahead, which is the adult phase, adult which age, yeah. we are sitting right now in our adult phase. So in that case, I guess six to eight hours is somewhat recommended depending uh -huh. on your schedule, depending on your day-to-day uh, -day activities. Six to eight hours if you're giving to your body in terms of sleep, you're doing a good job. Okay. Now, when we move from uh, say uh, adults to elders, uh -huh. 
the ideal sleeping so time senior is senior citizens yeah, yeah. the ideal sleeping time is 7 to 9 hours 7 to 9 7 to 9 hours yeah so it increases a little bit uh-huh. though some people find it difficult in terms of seniors to speed i would say i would say if i look around senior citizens and my i look at my mother and people around me they don't really get that kind of sleep i mean yes. normally like 4 to 5 hours or maximum 6 hours i've heard but do you think that that is something which will uh, not be good for them or is it uh, not it goes really the body not really so again it is in uh, average and idle time idle so when time. we say 7 okay. to 9 hours it is an idle, idle time, time. yes yeah, if yeah. they are following that it is great but anything less than that they can try and improve it but not really necessary i would say cool um, i mean we were talking about screen time and nowadays i feel that a lot of us um and a lot of housewives a lot of people going and working outside traveling they are involved in too much of social media screening um I've just read somewhere that it disrupts your screen and the more time you're spending just not social media or the screen time as well so what is the suggestion you're going to give to such people who are utilizing it and are using it too much and maybe that's not really helping them in their sleep no it's it's not helping them it's rather disruptive for uh-huh. their sleep cycle okay so uh you'll be amazed to know that all the devices that we generally use they emit some blue waves which is very dangerous for health okay. and very uh, not so useful for the sleep cycle or the normal functions of the body so thing that i'm going to recommend to our viewers over here is that you need to put a digital curfew by digital curfew i mean to say that you have to restrict the screens within 1 hours of your bedtime uh-huh. at least you need to put your devices in the night mode so that the light emissions are less okay you need to have a cool and uh, uh preferably a dark place to sleep in uh-huh. you should make yourself as much comfortable as you can okay so you need to basically correct on those things and digital devices are a big no no you have to avoid them at least 1 hour uh, before the uh, bedtime uh, so that's that's my recommendation so great tips there babe. but i see that a lot of us keep complaining about that i'm not able to sleep properly i'm not having sound sleep but we keep doing this mistake so i mean thank you so much it's absolutely great Now coming to um the sleep tracking devices I mean I've heard uh, I don't use them but I have seen a lot of people using sleep tracking devices and it says it tells you that you had these many hours of sound sleep these many of normal sleep or maybe less sleep or whatever do you think they really help I mean do you think it is required for us uh, to invest on something or what kind of tracking devices we should go in for like Yes they are absolutely essential and I will say it is a revolutionary breakthrough uh, for the uh, generation it is going to uh-huh. help people a lot so see we have to understand that why there is a need of sleep tracking devices first of all let me answer that so as you see that insomnia or sleeplessness cases are on all time high whether yeah. it is india whether it is uh, on global level Absolutely for the matter, is growing right? yeah it's it's growing that. and with uh, rapid numbers that is growing yeah. so there lies the problem that people are not able to have a sound sleep people are not have able to have a good sleep so as we discussed just uh, some time back that generally there is a ideal time uh-huh. which people should uh, spend sleep, spend yeah. and sleep on so one thing is that we just tell them okay you have to sleep 8 hours a night or you have to sleep 6 and 7 hours a night and they are trying to do that but they're not ab- uh, able to achieve it Ah uh-huh. so there lies the problem with the help of sleep tracking devices we can actually monitor the sleep cycle so you at least know like how much was the sound sleep how yes. was the nod and yes, all that yes, stuff so yeah so that we are able to do the root cause analysis that uh-huh. okay this is the phase where the problem is coming the the, the this kind of a diagnosis of a problem and yes, then yes 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 so it it really helps in basically tracking the sleep cycle drawing up patterns and on the basis of artificial intelligence or other technology you are able to give recommendations suggestions that okay you need to improve on this part yeah. maybe the screen part maybe the um, uh, the the meals part maybe uh, the social media part anything so on the basis of that they are able to drop recommendations that this is going wrong wow. we need to work on that and on that basis in case the user makes improvement on those fronts they are they are able to oh, get something, their beauty sleep that's something new i've heard in fact yeah okay so i think i've also heard a lot of myths about i don't know whether they're myths or not whether they're true or false so i'm going to ask you some of them and just tell me and do tell us a little more about that yeah sure so firstly i have heard that uh, snoring is harmful i mean do you think it is harmful or is just a myth so snoring can be harmful 
snoring is not really a very natural process i would say uh -huh. uh, in case uh, it goes for a prolonged period then i would recommend to go for a medical checkup it can be condition of sleep apnea or any other uh, sleep related problem uh, in case you are snoring for a prolonged time so uh, yes it it is not But very natural curable, is it Uh, yes yes absolutely uh, anything you see with the advancement in medical sciences uh -huh. and with the advancement in the research and development that is going uh, in and around sleep uh, 100% is it is curable okay the other one i hear a lot about is that uh, okay i'm not able to sleep during the week but weekend mein catch up kar lunga yaar you know i'll i'll try to catch up at the <laughs> weekend and does it happen Uh, that's that, a very 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 common myth that's uh -huh. a, that's a question that i keep on listening uh, in and out uh, but that doesn't happen like that okay so you you can take example of meals or you may take example of say water it's not possible that you don't drink water for two days straight and on the third day you are uh, drinking up thrice your daily intake it doesn't happen like that you cannot ration it okay. you cannot store it uh -huh. similarly it goes for sleep so whatever goodness sleep is giving you you cannot uh, push it for get the weekend I mean, yes you cannot three days and you know get no no back, no yeah. although you you might be able to feel a bit more relaxed on your weekends you might be able to sleep more and feel more refreshed but that doesn't uh, really uh, what you say compensate for the loss of sleep that you have caused in the in the weekdays gone by it doesn't happen like that a lot of us also talks about that alcohol consumption helps you sleep better in fact i sometimes feel it's a thing which is spread by the guys to drink more <laughs> uh but uh, i mean would love to know about that do you think that consuming uh, some alcohol helps you sleep better have more sound sleep i'm sure my answer is going to disappoint a lot of guys listening to me right now uh -huh. so though alcohol my uh, might be able to uh, make you sleep faster okay but not really better uh -huh. so alcohol is basically has got some substances which makes you a little drowsy soothes your brain functions which 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 uh, through which you are able to get a feel a little bit relaxed and you uh, go into your sleeping phase a uh -huh. little faster but see again we have to understand that sleep is a natural process and if we will try and uh, fasten that process or if we will try and delay that process it it will not be natural any longer so uh, i would recommend not to resort to any kind of substances for a deep sleep rather follow some practical tips follow pick up a healthy lifestyle and i guess you'll be able to sleep better without any substances okay so last one for today and it's something very interesting i mean i was looking at the keywords about sleep before I actually coming to this podcast and i've seen that a lot of people research for uh, like to how to sleep like elon musk Uh, what is the sleep routine of uh, Bill Gates, or maybe uh, also about our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi? I mean, does he sleep at all? So, what is your take on that? What do you think that uh, when people are trying to, you know, imitate these big people, is it something to do with sleep, or is it just like the curiosity of people have? Uh, so that's a very interesting one. See, when people are searching for sleep routines of uh, Mr. Modi, or for uh, people like Elon Musk or Bill Gates. they generally are under the perceived notion that they are so successful in their life that they are working more okay. and they are working more by compromising on the sleep but it is not like that okay they might be right on the first part yes they are working more they are working tirelessly uh -huh. but they are not compromising on the sleep uh -huh. they are all having a healthy sleep schedule rather they are able to create a work life balance with other things they are able to do it in a more effective way in a more productive way they always have their good sleep 6 to 8 hours whatever suits them on the basis of that they are able to bounce back the next day make some good decisions in their business and able to reach a position which they are uh, living today so uh, that's about it great well ladies and gentlemen i have heard a lot about this and of late i have also heard uh, divide your day into three halves 8 hours of sleep 8 hours of work 8 hours for sam family time that's the mantra for you to have sound sleep so today we talked about uh certain myths about sleep and also talked about how you can sleep better i am sure that it's going to help i mean i learned a lot today there are certain things i was not clear about but thank you so much nirbhay for clearing it out and i'm sure all of you have also learned something new so how do you do like this podcast do give us your comments do give us what you think about sleep we'll be happy to take your comments with us so from now for this particular podcast thank you so much for joining us this is sleep time with quiet fit i'm going to see you soon very very soon thank you so much